I've been using the Apple Watch Series 6 for over a week now, and to be honest, it's both surprised me in a few areas that Apple didn't mention, and also disappointed me in a few ways that I personally didn't expect. In this video, I'll share my real-world experience upgrading from the Series 5 to the 6, and help you choose if you should upgrade, or help those of you who are trying to decide between buying the brand new model, or saving $100 or even more in a Series 5, which by the way, we have links down in the video description below below, all while still having the always on display that only the Series 5 and the Series 6 get. Let's jump right in and start with that because that's what I was initially most excited about. Apple made the brighter always on display a big deal and that was my biggest complaint with the Series 5 since in my opinion the screen dimmed way too much. I wanted an Apple Watch that always looked great on my wrist and had its complications always visible but I often still had to raise my wrist to get a brighter image. I understand that it dimmed that much because of battery life which we'll talk about in just a bit but Apple advertises two and a half times brighter always on but honestly it doesn't look that different. In our hands-on unboxing, they looked almost identical, even when I put a flashlight to both watches to get them to get brighter. In normally lit rooms, there is no difference at all, and because of that, I'm still constantly moving my wrist to see my info instead of just glancing down. The only time I noticed an actual difference is if I was outside and at the same time it was a very sunny day, which can be nice if you're sitting around and you don't want to raise your wrist, but typically if I'm outside, I'm moving around anyway, so it's not that big of an issue for me. The other thing I noticed is that the Series 6 seemed to be more sensitive to me moving my hand than the 5. It could be a software thing, but at times I found it annoying, especially when it's darker and say I'm driving or watching a movie, and my new watch keeps lighting up. Because of that, I ended up using the theater mode way more often. So if you're mostly wanting a Series 6 for that brighter always on display, I wouldn't get it for that, but there's definitely a few other reasons to get it, and the first one that surprised me was the battery life and the vibrations. At first, I thought I was going crazy because the silent notifications were much more defined than with the older watches, so I mentioned this to Adeem, but I was still skeptical until I saw I fix its teardown where they found a new, larger Taptic engine. It may not seem like a big deal, and for many it won't be, but it is a nice upgrade that I instantly noticed, and it could be especially useful if you use your watch as a silent alarm to wake you up in the mornings. With that, I also noticed an improvement in battery life, and it's a bigger difference than I expected. Apple keeps rating their watches at 18 hours of battery life, but in the real world, the difference can be big. When I moved to the S5, for example, with its always on display, I ended the day with 10% instead of around 35% battery life that I had remaining with my older Series 4. This meant that if I forgot to place it on the charger, it would be dead by the morning, and when I started using the sleep tracker, I had to remember to charge it every night before bed. With the Series 6, I noticed that I was no longer getting those charge before bed reminders, and I once again was ending the day with about 35 to 40 percent battery. Of course, your battery life will vary based on how you use it, but some people now end the day with 50 percent battery, but either way, that is a significant improvement, enough to wear your watch all night and not worry about it dying. That's partially because of a new bigger battery, and the other reason is the new, more powerful and more power efficient S6 chip. Now, the Series 5 used a slightly modified S4 processor, so we're finally starting to see some improvements from a couple years ago. As far as actual performance, the only time I noticed the difference was animation smoothness every once in a while, like when editing watch faces, so it's really not a big deal. Another noticeable difference is that 3D touch is now gone, with the Series 6 physically not having the extra hardware, which could be a reason why Apple was able to add better tactics and larger battery. I have to say that I do miss the 3D touch since I could access a few things a little bit faster, but with Watch OS 7, Apple actually disabled this function on all of the older Apple Watches anyways. Now let's talk about the new features like blood oxygen sensing and the always on altimeter. Now I don't hike very often and when I did with the Series 5, I didn't have any issues with the older less efficient altimeter. So I did some research and other people that do hike agreed that unless you hike all the time 
and you want super accurate readings, this doesn't really matter. As for the blood oxygen sensing, I tested it many times and I was surprised by how many times I had to redo the readings. Now, I personally don't have health issues that require me to test my oxygen level, but if you're somebody that does, this feature alone should push you to go for a Series 6, as long as your watch strap is tight enough. This would be a great time to mention the new Solo Loop watch bands. I bought a braided one separately and I love it, but like many people, it is too loose. So I do wanna point out once again to order a smaller size than you think that you need. Of course, these bands can be used with a Series 5 as well, but it'll cost you $100 for the band instead of a $50 upcharge if you're swapping out the basic sport band. So keep that in mind. Now, what you can't get with the Series 5 are the new colors. My Series 6 is the new red, and I ordered it with a sport band because it's the only one that would arrive at launch, and I really like the product red color, but unfortunately, the included red sport band doesn't match the actual color of the watch itself. Wrapping all of this up, after more than a week of use, the Series 6 is the nicer watch for reasons that I wasn't really expecting, like the new Taptic engine, which I really like, the better battery life, better performance, and of course, the always-on display if you're outdoors in sunny, really bright conditions. Now, these things might be enough for you to upgrade to the 6, the biggest probably being battery life, especially if you want to use it for sleep tracking, but for me, it definitely isn't. Now, if Apple gave me the option to choose to have the watch stay at full brightness at all times at the cost of battery, that would do it for me, but for some reason, they still don't give us that option. Now, if you're on the fence trying to decide which one of these you should buy, I would leave it up to the money. If you can get the Series 5 at a significant discount, that would push me to save the money and go for that one, but if the difference is minimal, I would definitely end up going for the Series 6. Check the links down in the video description because prices do fluctuate, and by the time you're watching this video, the Series 6 could actually be on sale as well, and at that point, definitely get it. For those of you that did buy a Series 6 or you upgraded to one, let me know what your experience has been like down in the comments section below. And if you're a fan of the channel, if you guys wanna support us, buy one of these super comfy premium shirts or hoodies or masks down in that merch shelf right below this video. Thank you guys for watching. Click that circle above to subscribe. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.